An impactful storm getting ready to cross the country, bringing multiple hazards with it, from strong wind to hail to even the potential of some tornadoes for many over the next four days. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this Monday, June 16th. It is, I do believe, if my math serves me correctly. And uh, yeah, that's going to be the big topic of today is that storm system. We're going to have multiple days of severe weather from today, uh, really throughout the next, again, four days or so for many of us. And that could include all hazards from strong wind, to large hail to even potentially a couple tornadoes and again I'll be giving you the latest on that uh, throughout the video today. Now, if you haven't already go ahead and like the video subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Great way to stay up to date as we continue tracking this storm system and whatever else uh, mother nature throws at us here over uh, well the next uh, forever basically I'll uh, again be here as long as I can uh, to keep y'all updated. So uh, with that said let's go ahead and dive on into it and start talking weather by looking at our satellite imagery and uh, water vapor loop today again doing a pretty good job at showing the overall flow in the atmosphere. We've got uh, this big pocket of basically nothing happening back out into the desert southwest. Uh, that's a big area of high pressure and right now the flow uh, rotating around that out of the Pacific Northwest and through the northern plains and then around it and then it's hitting basically another area of high pressure here where it's kind of getting shot again back up the other way and you can kind of see that uh, wavy pattern in the flow here uh, from the arrows I have drawn. You can also see it in the water vapor loop. Now a couple areas of note right now we do have one big pocket of disturbed weather, a uh, shortwave piece of energy kind of working on through the northern plains today. That's going to really be uh, kind of a separate storm than the one uh, that'll bring prolonged severe weather, but uh, it's kind of the start of the general idea of that storm system you could see up there in the north. And then uh, note uh, kind of down here in the southeast, all in kind of this milky haze of water vapor. Uh, we've got a lot of moisture content out there today, so flooding could become a concern in any areas that thunderstorms do begin to develop and potentially kind of train over some of the same regions. Uh, now taking a look at radar imagery, you can see kind of how this is looking at uh, the same way basically on radar. Uh, we've got uh, that kind of piece of energy, that little swirl up here into the Dakotas and Minnesota currently. Pockets of storms really scattered through much of the Northern Plains and the Midwest right now. And then also some kind of popcorn storms from the Gulf Coast all the way really through much of the Southeast. Uh, that'll expand in coverage throughout the afternoon today uh, as we get uh, some more lift to happen. And uh, that generally happens this time of the year, that normal afternoon uh, thunderstorm convection. I think flooding really going to be the biggest threat here in portions of the Southeast today. In fact, if we take a look, we do actually have some flood watches up uh, from our folks here at the National Weather Service. In fact, we had really dangerous flooding in the portions of West Virginia yesterday. Uh, portions of North Carolina got it really good. Uh, and you can see it's that pocket from Raleigh really through much of the coastal plain of North Carolina up through the triad into southwestern Virginia into much of West Virginia itself. And then even uh, into portions there near Pittsburgh and then to extreme southeastern Ohio in that flood watch. And also a flood watch here into the uh, Paducah area uh, and then kind of there into the Sykeston area of Missouri into extreme southern Illinois and uh, really just much of the western half of Kentucky in general. Again, it's areas where we're going to see potentially training thunderstorms today. That'll be the big topic out that way. And um, again, will definitely be something that we need to take a look at. All right, let's switch on over now, take a look at an upper level map today, try to analyze this a little bit more and start taking a look at some outlooks and some mesoscale models. All right, the upper levels today are uh, something that's very important for that forecast, and this is what it's supposed to look like around this afternoon, probably when many of you are watching this, and I'm going to circle a couple areas. Here's one up into the, the northern plains there. That's what's actually causing those morning storms uh, that I just showed you on radar, and then another area, kind of a bit of a short wave back in here into Montana and into Wyoming. Now, while that's happening, we've also got a bit of a uh, kind of not a very strong one, but a noticeable trough here into the east. That's producing areas of lift right over the southeast and helping to bring flow out of the Gulf. Uh, so it's that combination that's going to lead to the flooding threat in the southeast and then the stronger storm threat up to the north where we have these pieces of energy. And it's just such a good map to use this time of the year uh, to kind of pick out the little details in the flow here that could uh, easily sway the weather one way or another. And again, seeing that here on our uh, Vorticity map. Now that's this afternoon. Uh, let's get this into tomorrow, Tuesday afternoon and uh, evening. And you'll notice that's when our storm system really begins to take shape here. We've got a much more well defined trough dipping down here into the uh, kind of western Great Plains here. And you can see that uh, trough axis and a lot of spin with it. And uh, we'll take a, another look at this map here in a moment, but just know that's what's going to be the start um, of our severe weather pattern. Now let's take a look at uh, our 
uh, outlooks for the next two days. That's going to be today and tomorrow. Uh, today, we do actually have a couple of areas of enhanced risks of severe weather, uh, including uh, two pockets, uh, funnily enough, lining up with where we have those two little shortwave pieces of energy, one here into Minnesota and then another area back out here into Nebraska. Uh, and this does include uh, a little bit of a tornado threat today. Now, it's not off the charts by any means, but you can see for many of us, uh, we do have that potential from uh, that kind of marginal risk there in the green and then uh, that uh, 5% area of potential severe weather as well uh, up into portions of Minnesota outlined there in brown. So tornado threat not off the charts today, but definitely something we need to watch. The wind threat uh, will be a bigger deal. In fact, a hatch threat for strong winds here uh, into Nebraska. This does include North Platte, Lexington, Kearney, uh, Grand Island, uh, Burwell, and back towards the Sydney area, and even into the Sterling area of Colorado, and even back out towards Ray. So strong damaging winds could be a concern today. And then also the hail outlook uh, going to be something we need to watch for significant hail as well uh, in that uh, hatched area on the map. That's today. Tomorrow, uh, again, another day of severe weather. Like I said, tomorrow is whenever the storm system really begins to take shape. Another enhanced risk, Wichita, Topeka, Dodge City, St. John, and uh, you can kind of just see that almost smiley face risk tomorrow. And then another little area to watch here in West Virginia and Virginia itself. Uh, threats tomorrow, tornado threat, uh, again, going to be something we need to watch. We've got that 5% area, Topeka, Wichita, Dodge City, St. John, uh, back over towards uh, Great Bend, uh, Salina, Hayes, Manhattan. Again, I can keep naming cities in Kansas, but you, know, you can see on the map here where we can see that potential for a spin-up tornado tomorrow, or maybe even one that lasts a little bit longer than just a spin-up. Uh, not out of the question, hail threat. Also there tomorrow, uh, you can see for many folks in that risk, basically the same thing as the categorical risk, and then the wind threat, the same thing with even significant strong straight line wind a possibility in that hatched area of central Kansas. All right, let's swing on over now, take a look at some mesoscale models and time out the next 48 hours for you using our high resolution rapid refresh model. All right, let's start by taking a look out west uh, for the next 48 hours or so, and uh, not really much happening west of the Rockies, but I do wanna include Montana and the Dakotas in this little section. Uh, here, so we figured we'd take a look at the West Coast and the East Coast today. Now, uh, let's move it ahead into time. Here's this afternoon and this evening. Uh, by the way, I'll mention time above me is in Eastern time, so subtract two or three hours uh, depending on where you're watching from, whether that be Mountain Time, Central Time, uh, or West Coast Time. But uh, notice again these strong and severe storms developing. Uh, all hazards going to be possible here with this area of storms this afternoon. Again, Montana uh, back into portions of eastern Wyoming, western Nebraska, uh, southwestern South Dakota. There also could see some strong and severe storms. So we'll need to watch for that definitely. Uh, here with that potential severe weather later this afternoon. All hazards going to be on the table uh, like we talked about. Now that's today for your Monday. Notice overnight all this congeals together and starts kicking it out towards Nebraska as a mesoscale com uh, convective complex. Uh, but what's staying is this classic little Colorado low uh, and that could spark up storms again tomorrow afternoon for our Tuesday uh, notice how this evolves. Uh, here's tomorrow early morning, and then by the afternoon, again, more storms firing up here. Uh, all hazards going to be on the table. I think the tornado risk a little bit lower up here tomorrow, but still strong storms, hail, uh, gusty winds could be possible here into portions of eastern Wyoming, uh, even southeastern Montana into western South Dakota, western Nebraska, and again, during the overnight hours, congealing together into a bigger complex of storms. And that'll start to form uh, its own little system likely uh, by uh, our Wednesday morning. So that's the West Coast. Uh, let's shift it east a little bit where I'm sure I've got more viewers watching. Uh, let's start this afternoon. Again, pop-up afternoon convection. Going to be the big theme of the day from the Gulf Coast all the way up through uh, the Ohio River Valley and all points in between. You could see an afternoon thunderstorm. And again, if you're in that flood watch in North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, portions of Ohio and Pennsylvania as well, uh, you could see some training thunderstorms that could lead to pockets of flash flooding or just flooding in general. Have a plan ready, especially if you live in a flood prone area. Again, just play it safe. Know uh, where your escape route is and um, you know have a plan to get there and definitely have a way to get uh, warned should water uh, be forecasted to rise wherever you are. Now, that's this afternoon. Again, you can see all that pop-up convection. Again, really anywhere in the southeast. Now, as that's happening up here into Minnesota. Uh, a stronger storm is going to develop along that short wave piece of energy in the upper levels. We'll need to watch that. Again, uh, definitely going to likely produce some strong two severe thunderstorms here for our Monday afternoon. Uh, again, we're going to continue to watch that right there, to see, especially here by this evening. Uh, could even stretch all the way back out into Nebraska, where we have uh, a little bit of a boundary setting up here. It looks like a little bit of a warm front or something. 
uh, that these storms are going to kind of ride along there in Nebraska. So that's why we have a little bit of a higher uh, tornado potential out there and into Minnesota where we're near the surface low, just a little bit more spin and a little bit more conducive for that potential of severe weather in that region. Uh, sorry, you probably just heard a massive lawnmower drive right by my window. I don't know why they do that. They pick right when I'm recording to uh, mow the grass outside, but uh, is what it is. Uh, so that's today. Overnight tonight, again, this could continue. Seeing some rain into the southeast, even into the northeast, could see some showers. Big complex of storms likely there into Nebraska by the overnight of tonight. By the time we're waking up tomorrow morning here on your Tuesday, uh, still dealing with that complex of storms into portions of Kansas, Oklahoma, and into Texas potentially. There goes the lawnmower again. Again, I'm assuming you can hear it. I can definitely hear it. Uh, but uh, again, pretty strong surface low back out here into the Texas and Oklahoma Panhandle. The storms probably stay north of the Red River tomorrow uh, here, at least during the morning hours. As we get to the afternoon, though, notice that new pocket of strong to severe storms. All hazards going to be possible here into uh, Kansas, especially. It looks to be the hot spot tomorrow. You can see some of those strong storms. Tornadoes are going to be a likelihood there of that. Um, and then notice, again, other complexes of storms, too. We've got the leftover piece of energy from Minnesota today diving down the other side of that ridge. Showers, storms, potentially strong storms tomorrow. Uh, there into Illinois, Indiana, and even portions there of southern Michigan. We could see some strong storms here into the northeast, Pennsylvania, uh, West Virginia, portions of Virginia itself, and kind of surrounding areas there for your Tuesday afternoon. And then we get into the overnight and uh, again, it's more of the same. Scattered showers in the east dying out as the sun goes down and more impressive, even overnight complexes of storms back out into the plains. All right, so that's the next two days. Let's move ahead a little bit because we're not going to be done there. Wednesday and Thursday could pose a risk of severe weather. Let's take a look at some model guidance and go from there. All right, so I told you we'd come back to it, and here it is, that upper-level map. Uh, Going to play a pretty crucial role here in the forecast, again, for the middle part of this week when severe weather could continue. Now, let's pick up where we left off Tuesday afternoon. And again, I apologize. This lawnmower is going to just keep going back and forth, so we're just going to have to get through it this morning. But uh, you can see a much more impressive trough beginning to develop here on the leeward side of the Rockies. You can even see kind of the uh, short wave, or I guess it's not really much of a short wave. It's a pretty uh, big piece of energy here. Uh, but you could see the center of that trough developing, and with that, uh, a storm likely to develop with it. I showed you Wednesday morning on the model, a storm getting going there into the plains. Um, this is why we're going to have some upper-level support with this piece of energy uh, working east. And as that's happening, still some leftover troughing here into the southeast. Still going to lead to that potential of some afternoon pop-up storms here. Uh, really for much of the early half of this week. Uh, now here we go, this really gets going and uh, by the time we get to Wednesday afternoon, you can see here's that trough, here's that strong piece of energy associated with it and that's gonna help create some lift. Uh, and anytime you get lift in the summer, we've already got a lot of heat and humidity and instability at the surface. When you get upper level lift as well, uh, that only uh, kind of exacerbates the problem here and uh, could lead to, again, uh, some strong to severe storms even for our Wednesday. So you can see just looking at the upper level map, you would expect strong storms kind of in that pocket. I got circled on the map for you there uh, from Michigan all the way back down the Mississippi River Valley. Uh, again, with a look like that on our Vorticity map. Now, not done yet. Here comes Thursday afternoon. And uh, yeah, I guess what? We've got more of the same. A little uh, kind of tight core there of a storm, but a pretty strong one here in the upper levels. And again, then you would expect the worst of the severe weather to probably be somewhere in this circle. Uh, again, right out in front of these pieces of energy. That's where we've got the lift associated with it. We talked about this a lot in the wintertime if you're a returning viewer. Um, again, we'll talk later on in another day about the dynamics behind it, but just know we've got that area of lift out in front of the storm system. Uh, and that's what we're watching for, potential severe weather, even Wednesday and Thursday. And then by the time we get to Friday afternoon, yeah, we get a little bit of a break from that storm. Looks to pull on out of here. However, new pieces of energy rotating around a new ridge developing, a new ring of fire, if you will. Uh, and that's going to definitely be the theme of the forecast. Now, let's take a look at some ingredients <coughs> Excuse me, uh, for severe weather. Uh, getting choked up on all uh, the... Um, uh, severe weather here to talk about, but uh, here's Wednesday afternoon. Uh, you'll see uh, this is our plume of instability or thunderstorm fuel, almost kind of heart shaped in a way, a sideways heart, if you will. And uh, that's going to be the focal point for lift at the surface. Now, again, we have the, the upper level lift I told you about. We've also got surface lift. This is Wednesday afternoon. And then notice our wind shear. We'll go ahead and get this to Wednesday afternoon as well. Uh, we've also got a pocket of some pretty good bulk shear overriding some of that instability field. Uh, again, notice where the overlap is. It's going to be Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, portions of Michigan and Ohio as well. 
and uh, that again could lead to severe weather there on Thursday. Or excuse me, Wednesday rather. Wednesday we're talking about. Sorry. Uh, now talking about Thursday. Uh, Thursday another day. Here's the uh, thunderstorm fuel for our Thursday afternoon. Uh, obviously you're going to see this area out here. That's going to jump out to you. But really focus again on the East Coast. This is when the dynamics become more favorable for severe weather on Thursday. Uh, again, that's where we've got the instability at the surface. We had the upper level instability, like I told you about. Uh, and then as for our wind shear here. On Thursday afternoon, again, notice some of that overlapping places like New York State, Pennsylvania, uh, the Virginia is potentially as far south as North Carolina, but really I think uh, New York State, Pennsylvania, the DMV, that kind of circled area on your map, that's where the focal point for severe weather will likely be on a Thursday. And uh, guess what? The Storm Prediction Center sees this as well. Here's their Wednesday forecast. Guess what? It lines up pretty well with what we just looked at. Now, they do extend it further down out towards Oklahoma, uh, but Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, the states I told you that the models show the highest chance of severe weather, given the ingredients, lines up about perfectly with the SPC's outlook. And guess what? They're talking about Thursday as well. They've got uh, Pennsylvania, Jersey, all the way down through the DMV, the Delmarva, and even down into Virginia and North Carolina. Again, I would probably extend this a little bit uh, up into New York State, maybe something like this. Uh, and it could shift back this way a little bit given the timing. We'll see if it speeds up or slows down. But uh, I would I would either way extend this north a little bit. I think we'll get severe weather up into New York State as well, even if this uh, map doesn't show it currently. Uh, but again, it uh, goes to show the next couple of days could definitely be active. All right, let's switch on over, take a look at just two more maps, then I'll let you go here and uh, let you enjoy the rest of your Monday. All right, well, I hinted at this a little bit earlier, and check out this weekend. This is Sunday afternoon, folks, and uh, you'll notice yeah, the map starts to change up a little bit. We now have a big-time ridge in the east and a trough out west, so that then brings the question... Uh, what does that mean in terms of your forecast? If you live east of the Mississippi, that means it's going to get hot, it's going to get muggy, and if it didn't already feel like summer to you, uh, it sure will by this weekend. That's a big old dome of heat, basically, is what that orange is on your map, and uh, that's going to, again, crank up the heat and also probably dry things out at least under the center of this dome. If you're in that circle of the southeast, the even portions of the uh, we'll call it the Ohio Valley region. And again, probably going to dry out a little bit now if you're on the outer edge of this, especially this corridor I have circled out into the Northern Plains, into the Rockies. Uh, that's going to be a pattern that could support thunderstorms, potentially even more severe thunderstorms into that region. So uh, again, it's going to be uh, depending on where you are. That's what's really going to drive your weather here with this sort of pattern. But uh, either way, hot and muggy in the east, this uh, kind of area between the two and then around it going to be the new focal point for potential severe weather. Uh, again, with a look like this, that's this weekend. And then uh, you'll notice it doesn't look to really go anywhere. It could weaken, could shift offshore a little bit. We'll see what happens there. But uh, a big dome of heat looks to stay around here for many of us in the east for quite some time. And that's going to bring the muggy, uh, the muggy air excuse me, uh, as well with it. So here we go this week. Again, anything in that purple color, that's basically oppressive humidity uh, or mugginess. Again, this is the dew point map called the muggy meter if you want as well because it's basically what it is. The higher the number, the uh, darker the shade here, uh, the more muggy it's going to be. The more drier colors, obviously the, the less um, moist it's going to feel outside. So uh, notice that plume of moisture just working northward. It gets beaten down just a little bit behind that storm the middle of this week and in the northeast. Maybe we'll have a nicer Friday up in areas like Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire. Uh, but I don't get too excited because it's not going to last long. Here comes that heat, that dome of humidity. And uh, folks, we got dew points in the upper 70s for a lot of folks here in the east central part of the country. Uh, that's just oppressive mugginess. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to feel good. Unless you like the summertime, you like the humidity, then uh, this coming weekend looks uh, to be right up your alley. But for many of us, yeah, not uh, not going to be fun, at least for me. I'm not a fan of uh, the big time summer weather, but uh, that'll be that'll be the big theme. Uh, really through the next seven or 10 days. Again, still going to be dodging some severe weather that we'll absolutely be talking about as well. But heat and humidity, I think by this weekend, for many of us, at least east of the Mississippi, uh, looks to be the storyline. All right, folks, well, that's all I got for you on this. Um, it is Monday after all, right? I got to you know, refresh after having the weekend off. Uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully y'all enjoyed it. If you did, again, like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Y'all have a great one and I'll see you all tomorrow.